This is quite a week uh, in North Carolina. We actually had the governor on last, uh, you know, last Saturday morning this happened. Last Sunday I spoke to the governor about it, and he was really hopeful that uh, that he'd be able to, you know, that not he would, but that, that North Carolina voters and activists would be able to, to turn somebody uh, over. It didn't happen. And, and, and generally speaking, that feels like a sad thing for North Carolinians and their rights. You see it differently. Yeah, I mean, I think that there, I, obviously it was a dis disappointment, right, when Representative Cotham and, and no other Republican honestly voted to sustain Governor Cooper's veto last week. And we we saw the, or this week, I mean, and we saw the turmoil in that, right, when we're seeing uh, rights stripped away from folks across our state for reproductive freedom. But that doesn't mean that we stop fighting. Our party is a party of resistance, and we always have been from Republican oppression in our state. When you think about how far our party and our state actually has come since we're an over overcome Republican gerrymandering and racial gerrymandering from the Republican at the state legislative level, I really do believe that we have an opportunity here to galvanize Democrats and folks across our state who believe in bodily autonomy and reproductive freedom in order to change their minds, honestly, and say, like, you know, my opportunity is this year and getting involved is, is more important now than ever uh, because we have the opportunity to change the future of our state and take it back and build it up to being uh, what we know it can be. So there are a couple things going on. First of all, in North Carolina, you have a lot of statewide officials who are Democratic, who, who, who win in a statewide election. And yet your your legislature and your house are completely uh, uh, they have veto proof Republican majorities now. How, what does taking it back look like? What does doing the right thing look like? Is this people you're getting to vote? Is it people you're getting to run? Is it people who you're convincing who might have voted Republican to say this abortion stuff is, is, a, is a, a bridge too far? Well, if I'm doing it right, it's all of the above, right? <laughs> um, in some capacities, I think it's got to be a little bit of everything. And in order for us to have the, the right mix of what we need in North Carolina this year, it has to be strong candidates at every state and House and Senate seat, right? In uh, 2022, we left 44 seats uncontested last cycle. And that's not something the North Carolina Democratic Party plans to do again. And so we are recruiting folks from across North Carolina. If you'd like to run, please head to ncdp.org to make sure that you're signed up with us and ready to go for 2023 because municipal elections are happening this year and battleground 2024 for us starts with battleground 2023. We want to contest municipal races and give folks to an opportunity to vote for somebody else on a ballot because we know that democracy is not democracy without choices. And voters across North Carolina haven't had a choice in a lot of their elections in the last few years. And so the Democratic Party is prioritizing that. But we also know that the two jobs of a Democratic Party is to get out our base and to make sure we're protecting our incumbents. And we didn't do that in 20 20 or in 2022, for uh -huh. that matter. You know, Joe Biden lost our state by 100,000 votes. Sherry Beasley lost our state by 134,000 votes. And that, to me, are Democrats that didn't have their doors knocked, didn't have their phones called, and didn't understand that we are active and in their communities year-round. And that's the organization that I want to build across North Carolina this year, because I know it's, what's, it's what wins elections. When Democrats across our state get organized and energized and put together, Republicans lose. And they know that. And they're scared of that. I have uh, just a little bit of time left, but I want to ask you, what about the rest of it? The, the rural white South is a very comfortable, well-worn slipper for Republicans. You also want to go there and, and convince people to vote for Democrats. Yeah, I think that we have a really interesting depiction when we think about what rural really means. And, you know, I, I understand that rural to a lot of folks means white and it means white Republicans. But to me, it honestly means black and brown populations across rural North Carolina. Person County, where I'm from, is the, the city of Roxborough within it is 51% black. And when I became the Person County Democratic Party chair, I made the first headline in North Carolina by the fact that we flipped the Roxborough City Council from red to blue with three amazing black Democrats who are representative of the community that they were from and that they were vocal about the issues that that community was really driving towards and pushing for. And so we need to do that across North Carolina. And I know it's possible in a lot of our communities that we have just have not been active in because we've been writing off rural North Carolina as something that that is, you know, Trump country or full of Republicans. And to me, everybody's worth talking to. And we've mm -hmm. got to make sure that's the message this year.